Okay, I've had a couple people, and again, they don't understand the law, but um, this case is uh, based on certain things that need to be proved, and I don't understand everything about it, but the point is, if Johnny Depp had a habit of beating up Amber Heard, and it happened more than one or two times, or like he didn't, you know, if he did more than like bump her head on the ca coffee table accidentally, right? Well, then he doesn't have a case. That's really what it comes down to. And he doesn't have a case. Like, he's trying to make stuff up where it isn't, it doesn't exist. Because people are so biased against women, they tend to believe that they're lying when they're not. They tend to believe women's vaginas are the source of all evil. And Satan lives in one. You know, they people really hate women. And um, so this case is really solvable by watching this one video. And I've been telling people, this is the only video you ever need to watch it. If you don't understand, this video is a murder-suicide that Amber Heard talked him out of. and <laughs> Or maybe it was just a murder. And again, somebody like Johnny Depp probably could get away with it. Obviously, he, he had a plan. Like, he was meeting her there. He could have figured out some way to get out of it. Somebody with that much money could have figured out some way to get out of it. But... It wasn't at his house, you know, and they weren't married anymore. So it's a pretty scary situation. I mean, if you're married to somebody and all of a sudden you go missing, that's one thing. But when you're divorced and you go missing, they have a better shot of getting away with it. So oh, that's when people get murdered is when they leave. That's why women are afraid to leave. Sorry, this is getting me upset to talk about. But this video here... Uh, that I that I made here is dispositive. And what that means is you just don't need to know anything else after this video. This video is um, a playing, uh, uh, the playing of a tape in court where Johnny Depp was going to kill her, where she said, I'd never do that to you. And where she was begging and begging and begging for him not to cut her over and over. And she had to say she loved him over and over for him to stop trying to kill her. That's what it sounds like to me. There was a lot of rustling around. There was a lot of like fast movement scurrying. <laughs> uh, because it's, I, I've made recordings before uh, that were surreptitious. Clearly, she was moving really fast. This was in her purse or in her. You know, I used to keep my iPod in my bra. I had a, a job where I had to record at because stuff was going down. But um, <laughs> that's how the recordings turn out. It's just like that. Um, it sound like, sounded like, you know, really like she was surprised, like she was trying to get away from him. There was a lot of motion. And, but one, one thing it also shows is that she was so protective of him that she didn't even report it, even though she had the tape right in her hand. That's how much she wasn't trying to destroy him. She had this tape of him trying to kill her. She could have gone to the cops. She could have done a lot of things, but she just got out of there and she didn't do anything with it until he's trying to destroy her life with a million lawsuits. So that tape proves a lot of things. In law, a dispositive motion is a motion seeking a trial court order entirely disposing of all or part of the claims in favor of the moving party without need for further trial court proceedings. To dispose of a claim means to decide the claim in favor of one or another party, as a lawsuit may comprise numerous claims made by and against numerous parties. Not every dispositive motion seeks to dispose of the entire lawsuit. In the U.S., the most common type of dispositive motions seeking to dispose of the entire lawsuit are those for summary judgment. Many U.S. state jurisdictions also provide for a partial summary judgment or motion for summary adjudication of issues which only seeks to dispose of part of a lawsuit. C. E. G. California Code of Civil Procedure Section 437 C. F. 1. Regardless whether the dispositive motion is for summary judgment or adjudication, the motion must be supported by declarations under oath, excerpts from depositions which are also under oath, admissions of fact by the opposing party and other discoveries such as interrogatories, as well as a legal argument, points and authorities. The other party may respond with counter declarations, discovery responses, and legal arguments attempting to show that these issues were treeable issues of fact. If there is any question as to whether there is conflict on the facts on an issue, the summary judgment or adjudication must be denied regarding that matter. 1. In many cases, 
A decision on a dispositive motion is a prerequisite for appellate review. C. E. G. Washington. Rules of Appellate Procedure 2.2. The two principal types of dispositive motions in contemporary American legal practice are the motion to dismiss, sometimes referred to as a demurrer in a minority of U.S. state jurisdictions, and the motion for summary judgment or summary adjudication of issues. A dispositive motion may also be used to request that an indictment be dismissed or quashed, or for judgment on pleadings. At least in some jurisdictions, a corporation's motion to terminate a shareholder's derivative suit is treated as a dispositive motion. C. E. G. Dryling v. Chain, 151, W. N. 2D, 993, P. 3D, 861, 2004.